What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video we will discuss the types of RNN. In the previous video we discussed how the RNN looks like and we also saw what is the use of RNN and why can't we make a natural language processing application with the help of a simple artificial neural network. So if you haven't watched my video on that, you can find its link by clicking on the upper i button or you can also find the link to the entire playlist of recurrent neural network down in the description box. Now in this video we will discuss the types of recurrent neural network and we will see what kind of RNN is used for what kind of application. Now in the previous video we discussed this named entity recognition application whose job was to determine the entity occurring in a given sentence and we also saw how the recurrent neural network looks like. Now this is an example where the input length is exactly of the same length as the output length. But most of the application might not be uh, following this pattern. For example, uh, we can create an application as a movie rating system where the objective is to rate the movie based on a given comment. So in this kind of applications, the input can be of any size while the output is only a one single number between one to five. So the recurrent neural network will be slightly different and it will look something like this. Now here, we will only produce the output at the last word which means that we will pass the all the which means that we will pass all the words one by one and meanwhile we will also pass the activations to the next time step and once we reach the end of the word at that time we will produce the output and this output will be any number from 0 to 5. Now again you should consider that this output was given after considering all the words one by one in a proper sequence and these activations will change its value where at every different timestamps. Now some applications can be exactly opposite of this. For example, uh, an application such as baby name generation can be made whose job is to generate a baby name by from based on a given input. For example, if we pass male as an input, then it must generate a male name. Or if, and, or if we pass a female as an input, then it must generate a female name. And in this kind of application, the input size will be only one and the output size can be anything. And the model will look something like this as once we pass the input, it will keep on generating characters until it has generated the end of the word character, which means that here the model should stop. Now here the output from each timestamp is also passed as an input to the next timestamp and that is how the model knows which character has occurred first and which character to produce. For example, the vowels mostly come after the words like J or so on. And if the first two characters are G and O, then the third character is likely to be H or S so that the model can create John, Johnson or Joseph or any word like this. That is why the recurrent neural networks are very powerful in identifying the next words based on the words that it has seen already. Now an another application is music generation. Now there can be an another application which might have variable input length and the variable output length and both these are not same. For example, in the English to Spanish translation, the input English sentence can be of any length and the output Spanish sentence can also be of any length. So at that time, the RNN will look something like this, where once we have passed all the input words, only then it will start generating the output words. And in this kind of model, the first part, which only takes the input, is called encoder and the second part is called as a decoder. To summarize everything, some applications might just have fixed output length or fixed output shape and those kind of model can be called as a many to one applications. And some can be of exactly opposite type which can be of one to many. And then some might be of type many to many where it can also be categorized into two categories. Here the input length Tx is same as the output length and here Tx and Ty are not equal. 
so this was about the type of rnn but i we haven't discussed the mathematical details behind rnn yet i have told you that this looks like a neural network but what does exactly it is actually it is called as a cell in rnn and in the next video that is what we are going to discuss like how does this cell looks like or what are the mathematical equations that goes behind this rnn cell so i hope to see you in the next video and you can find its link by clicking on the left side of this video or down in the description box and i will see you in the next one